your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. And I was your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so so kind to me in all the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh he chases me down fight till I'm found thieves in 99 I couldn't earn it I don't No shout you won't light up, mount you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mount you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't. Shall you all light up, mount you all climb up, coming after me? So all you all keep down, lie you all tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. 
one down at your feet every moment of my wandering never changes what you see i've tried to win this war i confess my hands are weary King of the fight No matter what I face You're by my side When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you Oh, I will trust Truth is you know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen So in all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you oh I will trust I will trust I will trust in you oh I will trust in you you are my strength and comfort you are my steady hand you are my firm foundation the rock on which i stand your ways are always higher your plans are always good there's not a place where i'll go you've not already stood when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you oh I will trust I will trust I will trust in you when you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you Oh, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Oh, I will trust in you. Hello, church family. We trust you're doing well. We miss you. We're thinking about you and we're praying for you every day. Isn't it nice to know that people are thinking about you on purpose? Will you join us in helping us reach out to our church family and our community by contacting five people before 5 p.m.? And to help you remember this, we're calling it five by five. We have people in our church family and in our community who we need to check in on. It can be a short text, an email, Facebook, a phone call, whatever means you find. Just simply ask how they're doing and how you can pray for them. How do you know who to contact? Pray about it. Ask the Lord. He'll give you the names that you need to check in on. Be sure to consider those who are not at the top of your contact list. Think about others in our church and our community that you may not regularly contact. Just remember, five by five. If you choose a later date, that's great. Just more people, eight by eight, nine by nine, it's easy. But thank you for helping us with this important ministry. We love you and we can't wait to see you again. Good morning.
We want to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. My prayer is that you consider this an opportunity to engage in worship. Again, thank you for uh, being with us. We want to uh, welcome our Brookport Church of God family. We want to welcome uh, all the guests that have joined us. We appreciate you so much. And please rest assured, we read through the comments that you leave us and uh, we pray over each and every one that has uh, left a comment. We're lifting you to God in prayer. Uh, we are excited what the Lord is doing. His message is going forth. Lives are being transformed and it is all glory belongs to the Lord. Thank you for your uh, faithfulness in giving, in the giving of your tithe and offerings. Again, it means so much to us and continues to enable us to uh, do the work of the Lord, the ministry that he has called us to. So thank you for all of this. We love and appreciate you all so very, very much. I want to jump into the Word of God this morning, and we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 26, two verses of Scripture. Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. In Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, the prophet penned these words. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. I would like to read that now from the New Living Translation. It says you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you whose thoughts are fixed on you. Again, I want you to realize we're living in a time right now when there are many distracting voices and distracting forces. But God's promised peace to those who keep their thoughts fixed on Him. In verse 4 he said, Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. David Platt shared this statement. Now, David Platt's the one that wrote Radical and Radical Together and other books. And he made this statement. He said, amidst the turmoil, amidst the waves, so to speak, of this world, there is a peace to be found in God that nothing in this world can rob you of. That's what I want this message to speak to you today. In the midst of all the mess, all the turmoil, all the uncertainty, all the constant changes and the new news daily, new information daily, that there is a peace that comes from God that nothing can rob you of. Jesus, in the midst of it all, brings comfort and care. I'd like to share a story that I ran across. It talks about uh, the Salvation Army Citadel in Chicago, Booth Tucker. He preached uh, one evening on the sympathy of Jesus. After his message, a man approached him and said, and you're... It, oh, this, this is the way he said it. If your wife had just died, like mine has, and your babies were crying for their mother, who would never come back, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying. Now tragically, a few days later, Tucker's wife was killed in a train wreck. Her body was brought to Chicago and carried to the same citadel for the funeral. After the service, the bereaved preacher, which was Tucker, after the service, 
He looked down into the silent face of his wife and then turned to those attending. He said, the other day a man told me I wouldn't speak of the sympathy of Jesus if my wife had just died. If that man is here, I want to tell him Christ is sufficient. My heart is broken, but it has a song put there by Jesus. That's the peace we're talking about. I want you to know that Jesus Christ brings and offers that same peace and speaks that same comfort to us today. We're all well aware that time's life is like a roller coaster. Now David Platt said it like the turmoil and the waves. I liken life at times to a roller coaster ride. Now when I go to an amusement park, I'm expecting to encounter roller coasters. The thing of it is, when I go to such a park that has roller coasters, I have a choice whether I ride it or not. The thing of it is, you and I can be pulling out of our driveways on a Monday morning right after we've worshipped God on a Sunday morning, and when we hit the hard road, the highway, we are thrown into the midst of a roller coaster ride. What do we do when those roller coaster rides show up out of nowhere attempting to disrupt our peace? Well, Matthew 6 and 34 says... Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There's an old cliche that states that worry cannot add a single day onto our lives. And it's true. Bobby McFerrin wrote a song years ago, Don't worry, be happy. One of the lines in the song says, In life, in every life, we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Isn't that the way it is? Matthew 6, 27 says it like this. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? Where we're living right now, you can't help but notice that many are captive to the fearful environment and it seems worry and worrying are gaining momentum each and every day. I don't need to give you a list. I don't need to remind you. I don't need to draw your attention to any of the details. Every morning we get up and turn the news on, we're reminded of everything that's wrong in our world right now. Constantly reminded, constantly given the updates. And, and there are many right now that are experiencing information overload. The medical crisis, the economy, the unemployment. We go on and on. The world is in turmoil. And because so many are captive to fear. The expectations of many are fading. You see, expectations diminish when expectations are misplaced. And many are under siege with depression and anxiety. There are, there are those that are experiencing emotional trauma. They're engulfed in chaos, and confusion. Statistics tell us that we have spent 92% of our emotional energies over things that won't happen or things we can't change. Let me tell you, worry is a destructive pattern that many need to break free from. 
Worry works against our ability to cope. Worry complicates the issues of life. Worry drains us of our motivation. Worry hinders our productivity. Worry will ru ruin our relationships. Worry will steal our joy. So how do we stand up against all that seems to be standing against us? Well, that's why I want to draw our attention to Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. See, there is the reassurance of biblically related peace. And the, way, the reason I use related is our peace is related to or connected to biblical truth. That's so important. The news changes daily. The expectations of people change daily. The requirements placed upon us seem to change daily. We need a sure word that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I need a word I can count on. And that's the word of God. And the word of God tells us through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Another translation says God is everlasting strength. You see, the peace of God leaves a traceable path throughout the Bible. And there's a clear spiritual pattern for those that want to experience this dynamic peace. You see, there, we find here our source of peace. We've said it and some have maybe even sang it. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it from me. He said, this peace I leave with you not as the world gives. See, the peace the world gives is an uncertain peace. Vacillating, fluctuating. The peace he gives is that sure and steady foundation that we can anchor our lives to. He said, you will keep him in perfect peace. There it is. You see, this verse is saturated with biblical certainty. The comfort that, that, that the disturbed soul is in search of. The soul, and you've got to get this, this is important. The soul consists of three parts. It consists of our mind, it consists of our will, and it consists of our emotions. And that fits into with so much of what I'm hearing because I hear people say this, I don't know what to think right now. I don't know what to do right now. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel right now. So what does God do? God offers His peace. He brings peace to my mind. He brings peace to my decision-making process. And He brings peace to my emotions. Hallelujah. God makes His peace both available and accessible to bring stability and calm for those that are struggling with the pain and the perplexity of the moment we're experiencing. Oh, I'd much rather be governed by God's peace than be governed by the panic that so many are confronted with today. Panic creates unbearable pressure. Peace is the release valve to the pressure in our lives. You see, when I ask someone how they're doing, I'm getting these types of responses. I'm stir crazy. I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. The fear of the, the unknown is bothering me. The, 
there's almost that sense of overwhelming panic. If you hear me today, I want to remind you, we are not helpless and we are not hopeless and we are not defenseless. The peace that God extends to His followers becomes a, a guardian of our hearts and minds, our, our soul. It guards our mind, our thoughts. It guards uh, that area of our lives where we are trying to make right or correct decisions and our emotions. Everything around me may be fragmented and frail and falling apart, but the peace of God anchors me so I don't have to be fragmented and falling apart. You see that word perfect? It, 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 in Isaiah he talks about God will keep us in perfect peace whose minds are focused or stayed on Him. That word perfect is not in the Hebrew text. In the Hebrew it's peace, peace. It's doubled because they're denoting the certainty of it, the, the uh, enjoyment of it, the constancy, the continuance of it. Because this peace is not based upon my circumstances. This peace is based upon a person. See, if we're to obtain the peace that is perfect, peace that is profitable for our lives, then that peace must come from God. He is the person that can provide us with the things that we need and peace is one of the benefits that He gives us in our relationship with Him. That person is where my be peace is found. Hallelujah. Not my circumstances. Circumstances change. Situations fluctuate. But the person of Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And out of that then flows this, this, this next thing. From the person flows this sense of protection. We're protected. You see, in being a child of God, we're the recipients of God's peace. And this peace He gives to His children is not dependent upon us, nor the circumstances surrounding us. It's based on Him. And the text tells us that you, God, will keep. And this has a significant meaning, that word keep. It means to guard. It means to watch over. It means to keep secret. It means to keep close. It means to be a blockade. It's a sense we have a watchman watching over our lives. Hallelujah. When we're asleep at night, the watchman never sleeps. When we go and, and, and perform our responsibilities in life, there's a watchman looking over us. That's what brings peace. When my kids were still at home and small, it brought comfort to know that dad was in the house watching over things. Well, we have a heavenly Father that's in our lives and He's watching over things. That's peace. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, you want to talk about protection, listen to this. The Apostle Paul said, Do not be anxious about anything. Now, Again, you understand, Paul has every reason to be filled with worry. 
to be anxious. Study where he's at when he writes this word. And the peace that Paul is experiencing, not based upon where he's at, his peace is based upon the one he belongs to. Hallelujah. And he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And here it is. When we do that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. See, God's peace doesn't make sense. I ought to be consumed with worry. I ought to be biting my nails back. I ought to be shaking and trembling in fear. But the peace of God kicks in. Hallelujah. See, it just doesn't make sense. Contrary to, to, to nature. Hallelujah. Because it's not controlled by nature. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Listen, you're being guarded by none other than God Himself. The very creator of this universe is keeping us close to Him. And listen, He never will, and He, uh, he, he hasn't, and He's not going to start now forsaking us. He's with us. And that leads us to this point, the provision the person, the protection, and the provision. In other words, perfect peace again. He's placing double emphasis on the peace that God provides. This word means completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, contentment. Listen, how many today are experiencing emotional trauma? How many are victims of worry, sinking in sorrows? How many are facing things that seem so big, insurmountable? Listen, whatever you're facing will never be so big that the peace of God cannot override the situation and bring to you this Perfect peace. This peace is both free and fulfilling. Peace is available and adequate. It causes us to be able to have a song in the midst of turmoil. There was a Methodist preacher by the name of Luther Bridges was born in 1884. He married Sarah Veach, and they had three lovely sons. Pastor Bridges accepted an invitation to minister at a conference in Kentucky in the year 1910. So he left his family in the care of his father-in-law and made the trip to Kentucky. Two wonderful weeks of ministry resulted in the conference that he went to speak. The last service closed with great joy and excitement in the air. Made him even more excited to call his wife on the telephone. He couldn't wait to tell her of all the blessings that had been experienced. But it wasn't her voice on the long distance line. He listened in silence to the news that a fire had burned down the house of his father-in-law and his wife and all three of his sons had died in the blaze. That distraught father leaned heavenly on his Savior and expressed his faith in God during a tearful moment by penning these words. Simply, he keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in all of life's ebb 
and flow. You see, peace is that stabilizing force that every one of us need because every one of us are going to experience turbulence. If you've ever been in an airplane, you don't need the pilot or the co-pilot to break in and tell you you're experiencing turbulence in that plane. You know it. You feel it. Most of us have experienced turbulence in our lives. And in that moment of turbulence, we need that stabilizing force of God's peace. He said in Isaiah 26, the last part of verse 3 and then verse 4, he said he's going to keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And verse 4, trust in the Lord forever. Again, the other translation said trust in the Lord always. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. He's everlasting strength. You see, in this passage... We see the stabilizing stages to ensure we have the peace of God in our lives. You see, the source of our stabilization is based upon our commitment to keep our minds securely focused on God and God's capabilities. The idea is that we stay focused on God then we're going to remain stable and strong in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of confusion. The word stayed means to lean on, to find support, to uphold, to brace oneself upon support. Hallelujah. The idea here is in the midst of trouble and trials, we can focus on the Lord and we can find our support in Him. We flee to Him because we've been focused on Him and in Him we find that perfect peace that is noted and needed. Oh, I praise God for that peace that has enabled me to weather storms in Life. The word trust means to be confident and secure. Again, the idea is that once we place our trust in God, in turn, He gives us His perfect peace. This allows us to be confident in our dependence on Him. Listen. When we get there, we abandon our reservations and trust God completely. We found fortitude in trusting in God and His perfect peace has permeated our soul. Once we focus on God and we've intently placed our trust in Him, all our fears leave and faith is empowered. You see, it's then and only then that we can face the issues of life with freedom because we know that God is in control. We can experience perfect peace in God's ability. I pray today that God's Word has strengthened and encouraged you. I pray today that you will begin to worship and praise God. Again, God inhabits the praises of His people. His, as our praises go up, somebody said, God's presence comes down. Hallelujah. And someone needs to sense God's glorious presence today. Hallelujah. That's my prayer. My prayer that we will get a hold of the truth of God's Word, that we will focus on the, the portraits of peace that are shown us throughout the Word of God. And as we look at these portraits of peace, 
we realize that we can experience God's peace on a personal level. Peace that passes all understanding. I want to ask you today, first of all, are you at peace with God? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you confessed your sin? Have you given Him your life? We call on the Lord, we shall be saved. If we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. All you've got to do today is just say a simple prayer. I confess my sin, I give my life to you. I ask you, Lord, take my life. Come into my heart. Give me the new life that you have promised me. Just a simple prayer and Christ will come in and redeem you. God will save you. And you'll receive that spirit of adoption where you buy, where you can cry, Abba, Father. And there's no greater experience than that. I want to talk to everybody for a moment. There's a lot going on in our world. Again, I've said it so many times this morning that, that, that uh, the news is constantly changing. The requirements are, are, are changing every day. Uh, we just found out here in Illinois that uh, our, our schools now are closed for the rest of this school year. That just came out yesterday. That's just an example. The unemployment rate continues to go up. The frustrations people are experiencing because they've not been able to receive those unemployment benefits yet. There's a lot going on right now around us. But I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that the peace of God reigns in my life. I, I memorized this from the, the King James Version years ago. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Trust in God. Keep your mind focused on God. God promises you a peace perfect, tangible peace. I want to pray for us before we leave today. And again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating in the 5x5, five five, uh, reaching out to, to people in our church family, people in your community, and letting them know that they are loved, cared for, and you're praying for them. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness and your stewardship. We're so blessed that you're a part of this ministry. I want to pray today. In the name of Jesus, God, I, I ask that you continue to pour your spirit upon all hearts and lives. That, Lord, you will continue to blanket your people with your peace. Right now there is turbulence. Right now there is turmoil right now there is tribulation all around us but in you we are anchored and in you we have peace that passes all understanding a peace that that keeps us complete that that keeps us calm and i rejoice in that lord right now i just say a special prayer for our first responders, Lord, that are going out, serving their communities, putting themselves at risk. I pray over them today, God, that you would just grant them this peace of mind in Jesus' name. I pray for those that are on the front lines, those that are in the trenches, if you will, working in our medical facilities, uh, working to uh, keep people well, to nurse them and get them back to health. Lord, we pray for those folks right now in the name of Jesus. Again, putting their lives in the line of fire, uh, putting themselves at risk. We pray again special blessing and favor over each one of them. Continue to use this, uh, this platform, uh, this online service 
the means to get your word out to people, Lord, that need your word. And we rejoice in you knowing that all blessings are found in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for taking a few moments and joining us today. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Now don't forget, you can always give online at brookportcog.com or you can mail your gift to the address below.